All right, guys. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here. As you know, I'm Chandra. And um, I'm here today with a special guest, Jason Rosenstein, the founder of LFG Markets. And Jason is a Bitcoin OG, has been working on NFTs, both in the ETH space and now in the Bitcoin space. Uh, and he's been doing this since long before they were cool. And I'm very thrilled to share with him and with you all how we're revolutionizing the world of DEXs, uh, harnessing the power of layer two, cross-chain atomic swap infrastructure that we've built. And the DEX landscape, as you guys all know, has been plagued by cumbersome custodial solutions, being stuck to one chain, uh, or the need to constantly wrap assets, use some form of custody bridges, uh, and we don't, you know, as you guys all know, we've taken a position right from the beginning that all blockchains are specialized in a sense that each chain is optimized to do one thing at the expense of other trade-offs. And because of the structure and mechanics of all of these uh, networks, there was very limited interoperability. And today we are going to show you how that's going to change. And we don't just mean elimination of security levels of bridges or wrappers, but being able to access the best features of the chain while inheriting and retaining the security properties of their underlying blockchains um, is a big deal. And as you'll see in the demo, this layer two solution is designed to be cheap, fast, uh, while continuing to be robust, both in trust and uh, trust minimization. So this means that you get the best of all work. And because DEX operators like Jason and others value efficiency, we work tirelessly to ensure that our infrastructure integrates smoothly with all existing setups. Uh, and we've taken an API first approach to integrating uh, with Texas, make it a breeze for all potential customers and minimizing the engineering overhead for them. So with that, I will pass it to Jason. Uh, thank you for being here. And would you like to say a few words about what you're doing and uh, working on? Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much, Chandra. It's pleasure to be on here. I've known you guys for a while. I, I'm always interested in what you're building. And this is fascinating to me. You know, the um, stuff that's happening, like I, I started in Bitcoin in 2011, um, kind of went out and started exploring um, other chain stuff. Um, you know, Ethereum did some stuff with side chains on Ethereum. But finally, coming back to Bitcoin, I think a lot of people are kind of experiencing this hero's journey thing where we've we've gone out, we've learned all these different things. We've learned how to like work with smart contracts, like really understood what Web3 is, how we can interact with Web3 through something like MetaMask. And now a lot of us are going back to Bitcoin. Um, so, I mean, I've just been I've been blessed. Um, I was involved with nfts since before that acronym was was even utilized um i, I made some sub 1000 inscriptions on bitcoin just earlier this year and you know it's 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 time to start building back on it working on some interesting stuff to be able to do brc20 swaps ordinal swaps dex utility i'm building my own um metamask like bitcoin wallet extension um, so really working in Web3 and Bitcoin is is my passion right now. And to be able to work with you guys to see the, the demo, everything you have working and operating and see how we can somehow figure out how to work together is just great. So I'm, I'm really looking forward. And thank you so much for having me on today. Absolutely. My pleasure. So let me pass it on to Manoj. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I will uh, just quickly share a few words and I'll pass it on to Casey. So. What we will demo today um, is an alternative approach to the PSBT based uh, you know, swaps that most marketplaces are using now. Um, so we'll demo a truly atomic swap of an ordinal with uh, Lightning. Uh, so Alice and Bob, uh, you know, two of the parties of this swap that we'll demo today. Uh, Alice is selling the ordinal to Bob and uh, Alice sends the ordinal to Bob on layer one and receives payment on uh, layer two. Um, on L1, we're using a HTLC locking script, and on uh, Lightning side, we're using Volt 11 uh, hodl invoice. And when the uh, swap sets in motion, you know it uh, goes through several conditions, like um, like a Goldberg machine, like uh, is used to call. And uh, once uh, it is successful, you know the there will be an exchange of ordinal with the uh, payment uh, on Lightning. Uh, it is truly atomic in the sense that if the swap fails for any reason, the funds go back to both parties without any loss. 
uh, we believe that this uh, approach is you know superior to the PSBD approach because it, it allows for a much simpler UX and also uh, the way we built it, it's very modular. So you can replace that lightning uh, payment with an Ethereum payment and it will still work seamlessly. Um, with that said, I'll pass it on to uh, Casey Bowman, who is the uh, lead creator of this uh, swapping technology. So Casey, uh, take it away. All right, great. Hi, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. So you're seeing what I'm seeing now. Okay, so here we'll, uh, we'll, this is the ordinal that matched the new address that we went through and looked for in Sparrow. So uh, uh, just, just for demo purposes here, we'll use that for uh, the inscription that Alice is using. And again, I'll do uh, 8,000 sats. And here with Bob, uh, he is offering 8,000 8, sats. For the uh, same ordinal there, and let's um, so okay, and looks like everything is so. So we'll make the payment. So when that payment happens, is that a lightning transaction too? Is everything layer two here, or is that just a regular? l1 transaction right now um this is just this is the l1 transaction that's moving the ordinal so alice is offering to to move the ordinal to bob and what happens is we're we're creating a transaction well i'll go into the code a little bit if you know um time permitting okay, i was just um, just curious yeah. this part is l1 yeah it's all l1 so you know there's a transaction that's uh um hlc on l1 and there's an address to be paid to engage that transaction, you know. So um, th we're paying to that address so we can use this HTLC transaction. So Alice's ordinal is is, is uh, uh, going to this address that matches the transaction with the HTLC contract. And um, so she's paying just via L1. Okay. Uh, here. Okay. Because you still have to wait for a confirmation. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So uh, um, there is a confirmation that I'll I'll show you uh, when I when I do when I run. It's all set for minimum conf you know min conf one. So I um, will. You'll see. I actually do do a uh, um, a mining using reg test, and there'll be there's a conf. Basically, the software will wait and check and and use zero MQ to wait for. Uh, uh, I mean, it'll be observing transactions that are coming from the Bitcoin uh, uh, Bitcoin D and uh, um, it'll also once once the uh, once the mining takes place, it'll it'll see it in a block, and it'll check to make sure it matches the ordinal location, and then proceed. You know, it'll let it let let things happen. Otherwise, things won't happen. Okay. So here is uh, here's where I'm. You know, making sure we're mining. So. Uh, See now, okay. <laughs> now it's it's completed. <laughs> this is the usual. <laughs> uh, so here we have completed, and uh, so uh, what 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 what's happened now is that, uh, and I'll, and again we'll go through, we'll we'll go through the code uh, and see maybe more detail, uh, however much detail you want to see. Um, but basically now what ha what's happened is on the um, we 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 have we have made the payment on the invoice. I mean, initially Alice created this invoice. Um, uh, and then Bob created this HTLC and put it in place for Alice to pay uh, to a certain address uh, for that HTLC. Alice went ahead and 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 um, uh, uh, did that. Um, and uh, then um, Bob knew that once once she had once she had moved that ordinal into place and we checked that, um, Bob could go ahead and pay the invoice to Alice on Lightning, and. Once that happens, Bob gets the secret. So there's a there's a secret and a hash, and so uh, the HCLC is set up with that hash, and it can't be uh, Bob can't get his funding until he gets the secret that matches that hash. So um, once once Bob pays the invoice on L two, 
uh, then he gets the he gets the secret, and he can then use that secret to uh, procure the funds that are locked into the HLC. And so, the, including the ordinal, and it does travel. You know, according to oral theory, you know, it travels along the right what path. So he gets it, and this is what we'll see if we look in Bob's wallet. Uh, not this one, but Sparrow. So then is, is Bob incentivized to keep that ordinal on L2 or is it already back on L1 at that point? Or is that network paid? It doesn't ever go to L2. The ordinals can't move on L2. So what's happening is the ordinal is moving along on L1. And meanwhile, with the swap, we're actually uh, moving moving it um, on, uh, uh, move, move, moving money, um, Bitcoin on L2 to pay for the ordinal. So, so the yeah. ordinal is non-fungible, right? So it can only move on L1. So it's right. always moving from... Uh, so you, still have to, you still have to wait for the confirmation. Yeah, so yeah, we're yes. here. The exactly. ordinal, so but we, the payment can be made uh, much faster because it's, uh, it's going through L2. Okay, so the benefit here is that you're, you're saving on the fees of the payments, not actually on the transfer of the ordinal. Are you yes, still the waiting? payment... And, and also, um, and also, you can bring liquidity to this marketplace from other chains. So, I can pay for this ordinal for, with the USDT, for example. Right now, we're just showcasing Lightning, but essentially, the payment could be through any network. Oh wait, this uh, the Bitcoin here. Okay, so. So you can see here that uh, we're going to Bob's wallet here, um, and we can look at the, you know he's just received uh, it, and it's in uh, now the location is at five uh, BF, and looking at the Ordinal server and checking the inscription of where it's at, you can see the location now has moved to the uh, location in Bob's wallet. So we're good to go on that, and then you can see here with the Lightning, um, we'll go here to Lightning uh, in Polar, and we can look at the. Uh, information there. Okay, so this is Alice's um, um, lightning node, and you can see that we have an 8,000 SAT payment that's been made and settled. So um, now, you know, there's some details too, like with regard to the padding, you know, you're gonna be move, losing some of the SATs as you move from, you know, doing various transactions. So that sort of uh, piece uh, also, you know, we want to make sure we've had, you know, seven. Yeah, I, th I think we've been successful with doing just 1,000 sats on the pattern. It's been okay. Yeah. It's been okay. Um, so I, th I think this is excellent, guys. Um, how, so how do you imagine it? Like if it's, if you're, if you want the liquidity, if the seller, if the buyer wants to have liquidity from Ethereum, like, and they need to receive their ordinal on a taproot address, is that like that's not your problem, right? You, like, you're just building this. Yeah. Like, the, so the we're not building the wallet stuff. That's why we're using Sparrow Wallet in this case. Okay. Uh, there's very few. I mean, maybe we'll integrate Unisat or you know the stuff that you're developing to make it easier with the browser. Um, we also integrated uh, Wallet Connect, so you can do MetaMask and everything there. So okay. it would be very seamless. And so you, it doesn't matter, like, you're building the protocol. It doesn't matter, like, what yeah. like what the UI UX that someone else puts on top exactly. of it. If I wanted to come Correct. along and, like, I like my, like, DEX needs liquidity from Ethereum, we can use your protocol so that yep. we'll build a UI on top of it where user has to input their taproot address to receive the ordinal but then they also need to complete the payment and you take care of the swap of the payment itself and we like we get back whatever response from your api and it says listen like like this like the right. value the money is there then then like like the user can have access to that ethereum in that case exactly so we're building an sdk basically this is just a, a ui for demo purposes i got it that's it's excellent it's excellent guys it's really good stuff. Thank you, Jason. This is Thank good you. stuff. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I love it, especially with the, the time lock stuff. It's like yeah, this is cutting edge. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So, Casey, you wanna? Uh, I mean, any questions?
that we can answer for you, Jason? Mm. I think I think you pretty much got the the gist of what it is that we're trying to build and bring yeah, to access. I get it. You're, you're basically you can tell you can you can tell both parties. Listen, like this transaction is legitimate. The money's there. Like you just like both sides have like you, they got the secret. You can access it. You're just you're 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 like you're the decentralized middleman. You know what I mean? You're not a middleman, but you know, like it's like that's an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And again, all the code is such that, you know, right now we make it super easy, but, you know, we're making the code so that we can have the sophisticated users, you know, actually getting involved in the middle where, you know, where things are happening uh, in terms of game theory, you know. Yeah. Where I'm most interested in, and I think where a lot of other people are going to be interested is, is in getting the liquidity over from Ethereum. Because in, like, in the early days of, like, ordinal trading, like, it was just, like, spreadsheets and it was all settled in Ethereum. Like, like isn't that ridiculous like because because it was the nft collectors coming over from ethereum so i think <laughs> for at least for, for what we have going on that solves a major issue because the liquidity is on ethereum and to get it over to bitcoin is it's not easy you know no one wants to like take their bitcoin put it on coinbase or in vice versa you know take their ethereum put it on coinbase transfer out the bitcoin to like some wallet so I think this is very special what you guys have going on and I I um I don't have any more questions because it's it's like it's something that's so complicated to build you guys have done it but it just like there's a huge market gap for it so it's it's wonderful thank you so um again thanks a lot for taking the time and um you know, our goal is to to transform uh, marketplaces like what you're trying to build and and make them better. And we believe that by adopting Portal, you know, by building liquidity from Ethereum and other chains that are thriving on on the NFT transactions with the NFT collectors, we think we can help all of the DEXs, irrespective of what chain they're on, especially build up more volume and liquidity for you know ordinals. Um, and imagine a world where every DEX can share liquidity and volume, irrespective of the specific assets that they're trading in or the specific chain that they operate on. And our goal is, like Manoj said, to provide common supporting infrastructure, uh, make sure that the SDK is super easy for you guys to integrate, minimal engineering overhead. Um, um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. We're very excited about this. and. You know, obviously, we'll be doing more, and you're always welcome, Jason, to sit in on any other demos that we do to um, the other Texas or, or, or any of the other uh, potential customers' wallets in Texas. That's our initial target. So, yeah, yeah, I'd love to be involved. I'd love to figure out how we can work together. We have our our wallet launching pretty soon. Um, you know, our, our extension, Bitcoin ordinal wallet, and BRC twenty support. So, there, there's something that we might be able to do. Um, sooner rather yeah, than yeah, we'd later. love to support it. Absolutely, we'd love to support it. And uh, thank, thank you, Casey. Thanks, Manoj and uh, Victor. Great job as always. And we will stay in touch. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.